Hi everyone and welcome back to the podcast. I hope that everyone is doing well. Thank you so much for tuning in. I took a little break. Um, yeah, took a little breather from the podcast, but I'm really excited to be back on here and to be creating again. I also realized that it's actually been a full year since I started the podcast, which is crazy. And so I feel like this is the perfect opportunity to actually start with season two because, yeah, especially after this little break, I feel like I have a lot of new ideas and inspiration as to what I want to talk about on here and where I want this all to go. And so it kind of feels like an exciting new beginning for me and so I thought actually this is the perfect opportunity to officially dive into the second season of this podcast. So as you might have been able to tell from the title, today I wanted to talk about how to stop wishing you or someone else and kind of dive into this topic and this mindset which I feel a lot of us can relate to. I mean I definitely connect to this topic on a lot of different levels because now looking back I very much had a long phase in my life where I was walking through life really wishing I was someone else and continuously having these thoughts. I wish I was this person. I wish I was that person because then I would be able to love myself. Then I would be able to be happy. But because I am who I am, that is not possible for me. And sometimes they were very loud and almost consuming thoughts and other times it was more subconscious but I feel like generally there was just always this underlying idea I wish I was someone else whether that was no one specific at all just at least not me or someone in real life or someone I saw online it was just always this idea if I were someone else then I would be able to love myself and not reject who I am but because I am myself that is somehow not possible for me. I guess at the core what it all really comes down to is self-love and I think the first step on the journey of self-love when you're at a point where you really don't love yourself at all it has to start with knowing that it is possible for you to live a life where you fully love and accept yourself like you have to know that a version of yourself like that exists out there for you to find. And you might not know how to get there yet, but you have to know that you are worthy of experiencing that and that you are capable of creating that. Because if you don't know that, then how are you going to get there? And if you don't know that about yourself, then no one else is going to know it for you. Because now looking back, I think that's really what the issue was and why I was unable to move out of this mindset for so long. It's that I couldn't even imagine or fathom a version of myself who loves herself as much as I do now or anything close to that or anything that I'm moving towards. Like that was not even possible in my mind because I felt so lost in so much self-doubt and so much insecurity that I really thought I would have to be an entirely different person with an entirely different life to love myself. And I think that's exactly what kept me stuck for so long, that I wasn't even aware that a different version of myself was out there for me to find. And if you don't know what you're looking for, then how are you going to find it? You know, how can we go looking for something if we don't even know it's out there? And so it starts with knowing that that is out there for you to find. So I kind of always think of it like this. Imagine you have a huge, huge forest and there are lots of different paths that take you through this forest, like so many endless different paths that go through this huge forest. And some of these paths are 
really difficult and really dark and really complicated and really hard. And there are other paths that are amazing and beautiful with not lots of nature around them. And they have adventure and they're just like endless, endless different paths on this forest that you can take to go through this forest. And this forest represents your life and the different paths represent the different versions of yourself that you can experience in this lifetime the different experiences that you have your different life trajectories and they are all based on the choices that you take and how you choose to walk through this forest now there is this one path that you've been walking on in this forest and let's say this path is pretty hard it's really exhausting it's draining it's dark it's not a lot of fun because this path is you not loving yourself it is you wishing you were someone else and there is a lot of self-doubt and very little self-love on this path and it is hard it is exhausting, but somehow you are walking on this path and because it's so dark, all you can see is how it continues in front of you. You are not able to see any of the other paths. And so even though it is miserable and hard, you just kind of keep walking on this path because you somehow think that this is all there is for you because it's been this way for so long and you can't actually see anything other than that. And even though in that moment what you are experiencing is hard and what you have been experiencing was hard, it's actually just an illusion. Because when you look at it differently, when you zoom out and you look at this forest from a bird's eye view and not just from what you can see in that moment, you realize that there is you walking and then around you there are all of these other paths that are also possible for you and some of them are maybe even worse than what you have been experiencing until now but there are also others that are amazing and beautiful and full of nature and adventure those paths are you fully loving yourself for who you are and all of these possibilities are always there for us to experience it's just a matter of of choosing them and they are there even when we don't feel like they are there. Now that doesn't mean that finding those other paths is easy or that the path that you've been walking on hasn't been hard. It doesn't mean any of that but it does mean that those paths are possible for you to experience and that they are out there. It's simply a matter of knowing that they exist and to be willing to put in the work to leave the path that you have been on, even in that, if in that moment all you can see is darkness because you don't even know where you're going and you might have some time where you are just in the forest, in the middle of nowhere, cutting down trees on an adventure, trying to find these other paths that you can't even see yet, but you know in your heart that they are there for you to experience. But how are you ever going to get off of the path that you've been on if you don't know and you don't trust that those other paths are there for you. And so, yeah, we can sit there and we can continuously say, oh, but it's easier for this person. Oh, but it's it's easier for that person. That's why it's harder for me. And that might be the case, you know, can be very true. Like for some people, it might be easier. They might start out on a path that's actually not that difficult and it's easy for them to see the other ones and to move there. And some people might start out on a path that's really difficult and really hard. But then imagine someday when you leave this world, you look at that forest that you were walking and you think, wow, there was all of this for me out there to experience. And I just stayed on that one path because I was continuously finding justifications as to why that was my path when in the end none of those justifications will even matter anymore it will just be upsetting that we didn't experience more so no matter how much you are struggling with insecurity or self-doubt in this moment you have to know deep down that a version of yourself who is so filled to the brim 
with self-love and self-acceptance and joy, that shit is overflowing at this point. You have to know that a version of yourself exists out there for you to find. And you might not know how to get there yet, but you have to know that version of yourself is waiting for you. And no matter how far away you feel from that version, you have to know that you are capable of getting there. Because if you don't know that, then how are you going to start your journey to actually get there? And the thing is, that version of ourselves exists in all of us, no exceptions. I'm personally all for feeling your feelings and talking about emotions and creating the space to allow all feelings without judgment and to allow all thoughts without judgment and to know that what you feel is valid. I'm with you on that one. I'm really with you on that one. But I have also realized everything in balance. And so I think sometimes what we really need, rather than someone saying what you're feeling right now is valid, is for someone to actually say, you know what, what you're doing right now is fucked up. <laughs> and if you don't change how you're moving through the world, then you are going to continue to be miserable until the end of time. And so you might as well take some time out of your day to actually think about how you're going to change and to think about the action that you can do to actually change. Otherwise, this is never going to change. And so if I could go back to that version of myself who really truly disliked herself so much, all she wanted was to be someone else, I would say, I'm sorry, you feel like that. And I would give her a hug and I would say, I'm sorry that you're going through this and that you have feel like you've been dealt cards in your life that are making you feel this way and all of that. But then at some point, I would also look at her and I would say, you know, eventually you're going to have to realize that staying in this mindset is also in some way lazy, like it's lazy thinking. It's a lazy way of moving through life because continuously wishing you were someone else is also enabling you to not take responsibility for your life and for who you are and for what you want to experience in this life. When you are thinking, I wish I was someone else, I wish I was this person or that person, and if I were this or that person, I would be able to love myself more and accept myself more, and because I am myself, it is somehow not possible for me to do that. If we look at it from a different perspective, that kind of a mindset really is lazy. Like, it's a lazy way of moving through life. It's a lazy, it's a lazy mindset, because even though it sucks to feel like that, and it can be really hard to move out of a mindset like that. And sometimes that kind of a mindset is not entirely your fault. Still, staying in that mindset for a really long time and not choosing to move out of it eventually can become very lazy because it's allowing you to not take responsibility for your life and for who you are. But what's really hard is to sit there and say, you know what, actually, this is me. And this is my life. And so how can I make this work? How can I accept myself? And if I cannot, then what do I need to change to be able to manage that? That's actually really, really hard. And that's where I always think, you know, nowadays it's great that we are all allowing ourselves to feel and to talk about our emotions and how we feel. But it's really important that we don't forget the skill of knowing when to also put our feelings aside because if all you are feeling all the time is how much you hate yourself and how much you hate your life and how much you wish you were someone else then those feelings are also not going to get you anywhere and so sometimes we have to have the capacity to say I put these feelings aside and I'm now going to take different action I'm going to change, I'm going to do something differently to make this work. Because for me, now looking back, I feel a lot of this mindset, I wish I was someone else, was also somehow rooted in this belief that somehow I thought self-love was something that some people just had and other people didn't have. And so I would look at people who I felt had it and I would be like, well, you have it because you are who you are and I don't have it because I am who I am and so there's nothing I can do about it. But eventually I realized that's actually not true 
at all. Self-love is nothing that anyone just has because our world is not really built up in a way that it makes it easy for you to love yourself. And so anyone you see who really loves themselves, not in a fake or in an arrogant way, but just in an authentic, in an authentic way, they love themselves at their core. That person has probably worked their ass off to get there and is probably still working their ass off to stay there. And when I realized that, I was like, actually, this is giving me a newfound respect for people who I feel love themselves. And it makes me want to become like that and not resent them. I want to be like that to really also look at the parts of me that were somehow holding on to so much self-doubt and so much insecurity because I had somehow identified myself with a version of myself who just hated herself. And even though it was miserable to live like that, at some point that was also just me like I was just in that and even though it was miserable there was nothing much that could go wrong in it anymore like I just knew this is who I am and this is how it works and this is just it but the minute I decided to embark on a journey of saying actually I don't want to feel like this anymore I want to learn how I can move out of it the minute I was on that journey I realized actually this is difficult in a whole entire entirely different way like this is difficult on another level because now even though I'm not in that hole of a misery anymore I'm suddenly in unknown territory and it's taking me a lot of strength to stay on this path because it's you falling down and getting back up and getting knocked down and getting back up and suddenly you have to continuously go out of your comfort zone and keep growing and keep reflecting and keep moving forward and that also takes a lot of strength and it's also really scary in a lot of ways and I think when I realized how difficult that journey can be that's when I was like okay maybe really really deep down on a level that I almost didn't even realize there were some parts of me that were also holding on to this self-hatred because it allowed me to continuously keep playing small and so yes there is this one aspect that is holding space for how hard it is to actually love yourself and how hard it is to really feel like all you want is to be someone else like that's such a shitty feeling and so be in that cry it out whatever it is and that was an important part of my journey as well and I still make sure that I take the space to hold space for the parts of me and the aspects of me that still feel that sometimes but I think everything in balance and regardless of that there was also this other perspective which I had to look at eventually and which also helped me a lot eventually. All right everyone that is all I wanted to share for today thank you so much for tuning in I really hope that you enjoyed and I'm very much looking forward to connecting with you in my next episode.